Good evening, you guys. Here with State Rep Derwin Montgomery running for U.S. Congress District 6. Derwin, first and foremost, how are you feeling tonight? I'm tired. Uh, it, it has been a long but short um, several months here now since declaring back in December to run for uh, the 6th Congressional District, but excited, you know, excited about the opportunity to serve folks in a different capacity um, and excited, you know, for the people in the 6th District because the fact is that no matter what, we're going to get a new congressperson to represent the folks in the 6th District. And this has been a Republican-held seat since 1985. You are a Democrat. Does that scare you in any way, or does the redistricting, the redrawn lines just change everything? Well, as a Democrat, I'm excited. Uh, this, this is a Democratic pickup. The district now uh, leans heavily Democratic. Uh, so this primary decides really who's going to be the person that goes to Congress to represent folks in, in November. Um, and so I think that gives more voice to the people um, in the 6th Congressional District. It gives more voice to people across North Carolina, uh, because the fact is, is that uh, there were a lot of people prior to the gerrymandering um, being um, redone with the uh, with the redraw uh, that didn't have a voice. And so this gives an opportunity for more folks to have a voice. And now you have all of Guilford County. You have most of Forsyth County. Now, what are the platforms that you're running on that you hold near and dear to your heart? Well, at the end of the day, for me, when I look at policy, I look at it through two lenses. That's equity and justice. So whether we're talking about health care, whether we're talking about education, uh, whether we're talking about economic mobility and opportunity, it's through the lens of equity and justice. And so for most people, when we've had conversations, the top two things that rise to them is health care. It's, it's about how do we make sure that we reduce the rising cost of health care and make sure that everybody has access. But then secondarily, what comes is economic opportunity. I know when you look at, at the news, most people are saying folks are doing well, the economy is doing well, so most people should be doing well. But the fact is, so many people are still struggling. And when we think about uh, gun violence in communities and high crime areas, you can't have conversations about that without economic opportunity. And so um, I really believe that we have to do more uh, to make sure that we're creating more opportunities for folks and making sure that we're opening up doors for, for health care for every individual in our community. And your past and your presence as a pastor and CEO of a homelessness shelter, did that shape these platforms that you stand for? Well, it, it shapes my policy very much. So, you know, the work I do every day, I, I see um, folks who are dealing, who's struggling, folks who are making minimum wage every single day um, and, and can't keep a roof over their head, or folks who have had catastrophic issues on, on their health care side and how it's changed their entire life. Um, and so when I go in and I'm making policy, whether it's back when I was on the city council or now when I'm in Raleigh, I see it through the lens of real life experiences. And that's part of why I got in this race, because we need more practitioners making policy, uh, people who have actually seen it on the ground who can make good policy uh, to, to make a difference in people's everyday life. And I have to ask you, have you faced any ageism? You are a younger candidate, and you proved everyone wrong when you were 21 years old and you won a seat in City Council, Winston-Salem City Council. Yeah, you know, um, the, we, we've had those conversations uh, as we go on, and, and I can't help it, that I still look younger than I actually am. Um, and, and so even even in this race, you know, people say, well, you know, you're so young. And, and so it goes into really talking about the work that we've already done. Um, and the fact is we need more young people engaged in the process. When we look at um, uh, uh, turnout for folks who are uh, under the age of 40 um, uh, in comparison to those who are older than 40, um, it is, it's extremely low. And I think part of that is the fact that people don't see themselves in elected officials. And so you got to give everybody somebody to vote for and to let. Um, but one of the things that I bring to this that is actually interesting um, is that you often don't get the youngest candidate with some of the greatest amount of experience, which is different for me in this race. Absolutely. And Mr. Montgomery, the excitement in this room is palpable tonight. The numbers aren't trickling in just yet, but what are your hopes? What are you thinking the outcome is going to be at this very moment? Well, of course, we have worked hard, and at the end of the day, I am grateful to our team who put in so much work, uh, our workers who are out in the pouring rain today, who are at pool polls greeting folks every day, and so we want a victory tonight. Um, and it's not about me as a candidate, but it's about the people who uh, uh, are in this district who need a voice. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, that my commitment has been and continues to be to make sure that we work on behalf of a Democrat to serve the 6th Congressional District. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate your time. I'm going to let you enjoy the fruits of your labor. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank we are you. at the Enterprise Center in Winston-Salem. This is a free and public event. You are more than welcome to come.